Hi there, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And I'm participating in the Global Monthly Video Hop. So if you're here from one of the other videos, enjoy. And if you've just started here, please look below for lists of the other participants so you can click on to their links to see their videos. Now this month, our theme is scraps. So quite often when I do paper crafting, um, I like to keep um, all the little bits and pieces if they're not too small. And I put them in a little container, such as this, with all my scrap materials. I get a lot of little strips of white, which are really good for doing sentiments. And then I get a variety of other uh, cardstock colors, even scraps of uh, designer series paper, etc. And if it looks like it has any useful um, section left, I will put it in my scrap pile. So something like this, I could use a punch or a die to cut a heart out. Um, I might cut like a little tree out of here. So if I think it's going to be still useful, I just pop it into my scrap pile. And then I sometimes just go through my scrap pile and create cards with that. I've already done um, some videos um, in the past showing how to create cards with scrap backgrounds. So if you'd like to see that, have a look um, at my list of videos. And I just want to show you some samples here before I show you the card that we're going to create today. So for this one, I just chose different colored uh, background pieces of scrap uh, cardstock and then put them together butting up against each other to make the background and then matched it up with um, some die cuts and a little sentiment. This one I did a similar thing um, and but this time I did them all <laughs> matching up perfectly and then I stamped in the se center section. If you are going to stamp on your scraps make sure that they're not too dark so your image shows up. This one I decided to use black and white scrap pieces and I wove them together before I die cut them with the stitched rectangle die and then use that for the background for this birthday card. This I used uh, scraps of designer series paper and just cut them at angles, lined them up to make an interesting background for this card. This is a similar one where I've done uh, different pieces of designer series paper. I've done them at an angle and this time I've stamped um, my sentiment on the background cardstock and then did, did the scrap pieces along the sides. And here I use the scrap pieces. Um, I die cut the image and did scrap pieces to fill in the image in the background. So uh, you can use your scraps to create color for punches or die cuts. But today we're going to do something different. So I'll move my scrap bin away. And this is the card we'll be doing today. I'll be making a similar card today. Uh, this one, again, I use scrap pieces, but I've stamped on all the different scrap pieces and then I've used the <coughs> Build a Banner punch which gives you options of different end portions as well as three different sizes so it goes half inch three quarter inch and one inch however you can um, do uh, sizes between that and I'll be showing you in this demonstration so you can have like the tail or the tip depending on what you want and in this case we're going to use both of them so for here I have different size um, colored scrap pieces with different sentiments. For this card, I just went through all my um, card, um, my stamp sets and found different sentiments that I liked. This is supposed to be um, an affectionate card. You could say it's a Valentine's card, um, as well as cheering um, people up, smile, etc. And so this one, after I put the different um, pieces on, if you have a close look, I then embossed it with the scripty embossing folder and then just add it the element of the butterfly which comes from the touch of ink stamp set which is a free stamp set you can earn uh, up till the end of February for celebration and for the card we're doing today I'm going to be using the 
hummingbird. So this one, it looks fairly simple and it's a great one to do if you have lots of sentiments. So <clears throat> let's get started with that. So instead of um, looking and using lots of different stamp sets like I did with this one, these sentiments come from lots of different sets I have, I've decided to make this new card a birthday card. So I've got my itty bitty birthday stamp set out and I'm going to be using um, most of these uh, sentiments to make this card. And as I mentioned, the hummingbird, I actually already have that done and I stamped that in Memento Black on a piece of Scrap Whisper White. So I had Scrap Whisper White, stamped it in Memento Ink, and then just put a few different colors, um, uh, brushed a few different colors of ink on there. And that is how I decided which scrap pieces to use. So based on that um, hummingbird that I've already finished, I then went through my scrap pile and I grabbed some colors that kind of uh, go with the colors there. And I don't know if you can quite see, um, I've already uh, put the Wink of Stella on it so it's shiny, you might not be able to see. So we'll set that aside for now. So I've got colors greens, uh, some browns, pinks, reds, coral colors in different thicknesses. So. Once you get your scrap pieces, you could just go with all white and then have different colored inks on there. But you need your background base card. This time around, I'm doing the card um, long ways. So I cut my A4 piece long ways and then folded it. This card here that I've already done is a standard um, A4 card. I did black right to the edge here because I put it on a whis uh, whisper white base. For this, because I've got a black base, I've cut the black card for the top slightly smaller, so there'll be a, a border and I can put my uh, banners right to the edge. And because it's black, I need a piece of white cardstock to put on the inside so you'll be able to have somewhere to write your message. So we'll set that aside for now and we'll start making our card. So what I suggest you do is the first thing is to um, punch one end of each piece of cardstock because that way you'll know where um, on the cardstock you can stamp your image. Now if you don't have this punch, which is a fabulous punch to have, you can simply snip with your scissors. You can snip it. Um, so if your cardstock fits within one of those grooves, you just slide it all the way to the end. You can turn it over and check and then just punch and it punches a little bit out. Now don't throw that little bit away because we will be using that um, later on to line things up as well as once you have a whole bunch of these little scraps you could put that together um, and make a mosaic card if you'd like. So punch the ends to give yourself a nice angle and then choose one of the sentiments that will fit on there. So with this one I'm thinking maybe the birthday wishes be nice and long. So the reason I already punched that is so I know where to set my uh, stamp, my image there. So just grab yourself a block that fits. And if it doesn't fit, you can always go diagonally with your blocks. There's no rhyme or reason why you have to do them straight. And I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo, tuxedo Black Ink just to make it all the same. Give it good pressure. I always turn it over just to check that I haven't missed any of the uh, stamp and then just as close as you want to the end of your banner, press it down and pull it up. Now that uh, came out pretty well. I just don't think it's dark enough there. There's always two sides to each piece of cardstock so you can turn it over, give it a bit more ink and I'm just going to to give a bit more pressure on those spots. See if I can get it darker. Nope. So I'll use that side. So do that with um, a lot of the images and then on the other end you want to um, cut your banner shorter. What I suggest you do is one of your scrap pieces. We're going to make a little template so to speak. So this end, I want to have the pointy end of my punch. So I'm going to slide that in 
And if, see this one's slightly loose, it doesn't fit nice and firm, what you can do is turn it over just to make sure that you've lined it up evenly and then punch that out. So that, I'm going to use that scrap piece there to determine where to have the other end of my banner. So if you hold the scrap piece next to what you've already stamped and hold it where you want it to go, so imagining that the um, pointy bit's gonna be coming right there, this will show you how long you need your piece to be to put it into the punch. So what I do is hold it there, grab a pencil, and just simply mark the line there. Okay, so I did a pencil mark there, so I can take that template off and see the pencil mark there. So then you can simply snip it off at the pencil line. And now when I put it in the punch to get me the other end, it will be the right length. difficulty with that. Oh, it's bent. Okay, so I can slide it all the way through and that will give me the right depth for that first piece. And I keep all my scraps aside because you never know what you need. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will choose some more to stamp with and mix up the colors. So you want to have different types of stamps and different thicknesses of your colors. So this one is quite big. Well, we don't want to be late at birthday. Um, there we go. Cheers to you. That's quite a big one. So I need to find a piece that's a slightly fatter piece. So here, I've already done the one end, so I'm going to stamp that on there, close to the pointy end. Again, check that everything's there. So I'm going to stamp that close to the pointy end. And then... do the opposite of what I did for the first one. So I have my pointy end. Now I have to figure out where I want the um, flag end to go. So taking this little piece here, hold it up, and that will show me where the flag will be if I put it through the punch. And so I just need a little pencil line just to show me where I'm going to cut my paper off. Snip your paper, and now when you slide it in the punch, it'll be in the right place. Now this one's too short for me to hold in the punch, so if you have a piece that's too short, you simply get your post-it notes and use that to extend your reach. So take a post-it note, wrap it around the end that you're not going to punch, That's just going to hold that in place, and that essentially is actually like an extended finger for me. And I want to have that image on the other side, so I can now slide that through. Now, because this is not fitting right in the grooves, that's when you want to turn it over and adjust it so you're getting a nice, even Slide it back out. Take the post-it note off, which hasn't damaged it at all, and now I have a nice small sentiment there. So go ahead and um, mix and match your different colors. Um, I might start with some of the bigger ones to, to start with, and then put some of the skinnier ones in. So I might do awesome at any age on the green. Sure to be a fun day 
on the pink. So again, make sure that you punch the end, one end at least. <coughs> Keep those little scraps, so I've got my little tail there to start with. And this one, the scrap is a bit of a different size. So when I slide it through, I'm just going to turn it over because sometimes if it's the wrong size and you get it off, it can punch at the wrong angle. So just looking at that to make sure it punches the right angle. And that's how you go along. So I'm going to stamp up a bunch of these with all the different words from the itty bitty birthdays, except for stuff like um, happy belated birthday, things that might not go. And then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've finished stamping all the words and punching them out. So I used all the sentiments from the Itty Bitty Birthday stamp set, except for the belated birthday one, and fit them on all different um, size cardstock. And now I'm going to arrange them onto my um, piece to go on the front of my card here. So depending on how you want it to go, um, you could have it going um, uh, portrait or landscape. No, that's portrait or landscape. Um, and it depends on how big your words are. So I'm just going to put a few of these on and see how they look. Um, because this is going to sit up, I can go right to the edge where my other card, I didn't go right to the edge. So trying to keep some of the big ones together. You just work out where you want things to sit and how you want them to look. And you don't really want to put a lot of the same colors together. So just um, seeing what works well with different ones. Um, trying to get some crumb cake. And so you can also put different sizes together. They don't all have to be the same size. Maybe some green down there. So we'll try to see if I can fit it on here going this way. That one doesn't quite fit there. So you can mix and match different um, colors and sizes. And if you find it doesn't quite fit, so like with those two, they don't quite fit. I could always snip off just a little bit more on the end because there is some space there. But I'm just trying to um, see what I've got to work with down here. And some friendly bee brown down there. And try to intermingle them to give it some interest as well as if you find that you need more um, sayings um, I could always stamp something from another card um, and so I'm going to play around with this for a little bit and then I'll glue them down and once there's a glued down I'm going to emboss the page so I'll show you that in just a minute so I've stuck them all down, I arranged them the way I want, and then I'm using the liquid Tombow to um, put them in place, and that way um, you have some wiggle room. Now I've mixed and matched, so I have some wider ones with skinnier ones, so um, it doesn't all um, line up nice and tight. And the whole point is you're using scraps, so you can have different widths on your background and because it's the same background as the cardstock um, I can go ahead and um, have it right to the edge or not quite to the edge because you're going to see the black in the background there so now the next step that um, I'm going to do is emboss it and as you can see over here there's all the little scraps left over from um, making my little banners and you can use those if you want to do some kind of scrappy card because you can just layer them on top of each other or put them together or you can just fit them out but so like you could see having different layers give you different effects so with this technique you end up with even more scraps so I'm going to emboss this 
but this time I'm going to emboss it with a subtle embossing folder. And when I was arranging what to put where, I noticed I had some shorter ones, so I strategically put them in a spot that I could put my um, hummingbird to cover up any large um, gaps in color. So I will emboss this with the subtle embossing folder, and I'll come back and finish it up. So I've embossed it with the subtle embossing folder, which is this one, which doesn't look like a whole lot, just a bunch of little lines. But it's one of my favorite ones because um, it gives you some texture and doesn't makes it look not so flat. So for this, I'm now, now going to um, pop it up with some dimensionals so it stands off the background a bit. And I like to um, just do the corners. And I also cut my dimensionals in half so I don't use full size for some things. It makes them last longer. So I'm just going to pop this up onto the base. And unlike my first card, I went right edge to edge because um, the background was a different color. Now I probably should be using the black um, dimensionals for this. I forgot to grab them. So Then I'm going to uh, do the hummingbird and I'm going to put a bit of thread um, behind it just to give it a bit more interest so it stands out a bit more. So you can decorate the front of your card however you'd like. You might just put um, really wouldn't recommend putting another sentiment on the front, but you could do a big one there. So make sure you're opening your card the correct way before you put the top on. And then just place that up on the top. Give it a bit of height. Now, I'm going to put, I was thinking about putting a bit of silver thread behind it. Let's see, how's that going to stand out? see if that's going to stand out very well. If I put some silver thread behind. My other thought was I have some pink thread. The rose metallic thread. Let's see how that looks. Which one looks better? You can just wrap it around your fingers a few times just to give you a clump of threads just to see how that no I think I'll go with the silver because it looks better because there's some pink and greens um, so one tip if you're putting any ribbon or thread behind an embellishment put a little bit of um, double-sided tape on it and that way you can hold your thread in place while you're arranging your element. So a little bit of double-sided tape there. And then I can just tape down the edges, hold them in place, and then just scrunch it however you want it to look so you can get whatever effect you want, circular effects or diagonal effects. I think I want to make this all coming like from the same direction. And so I'm just sticking it down on that tape on the back as I do my curve and bring it back around onto that tape. And he's going to be sitting up there, so I think maybe one more little bit. Snip that off and then tuck that in the back on that tape. So that just gives him a bit of interest in the background. And then to hold it in place even more, I'll pop my dimensionals on the back. One other thing, too, is if you're doing um, a 3D thing, if you want to give it some dimension, just kind of roll it with the back of your finger in your hand, the palm of your hand. You can kind of rub it a bit, and that will give it some dimension. I should have done this first, but so 
So you can use your bone folder, but this is giving it the curve of my hand and I'm using the back of my finger to give it a bit more. So now he curves up there and I might put his wings coming upright. And manipulate it the way I want it to sit. And then I'm going to use full dimensionals on here because I want to hold that thread in place. Okay, and then I might do one on his wing. There we go. And I'll pop him in place. I say him, could be a girl. I always think of hummingbirds as boys. I don't know why. He must obviously have female ones. And so I'm just putting it so it can um, cover up that black empty area there. But also, uh, I don't want to cover up some of the sentiments. I mean, some of the sentiments won't matter. You'll still be able to understand what they are. But I want some of them to be seen. So we've got our little mean bird there. And on the inside of the card, um, there's another celebration set called Approaching Perfection that you can get free. And I thought this might be nice inside. Newsflash, birthdays found to be good for health. Studies show that people who have more birthdays live the longest. So since the front is all about birthdays, I thought we'd try that on the inside. And I haven't used this stamp yet. So again, going with the Memento Black. When you have a stamp that has a solid section to it, you need to make sure you've got really good ink on there. Um, unless you're going to use the Stamparatus, because being red rubber, it's not see-through, so I won't be able to see. I won't be able to see and do it a second time. So you just got to have a look, and I can see I'm missing ink on uh, an edge there. So just ink it up really well. And then I always do my sentiments crooked. Let's see if I can do this without being crooked. I think it's got to do with when I do them on video. The pressure. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. So that's our new splash about birthdays. And we'll pop that on the inside. glue on there. And then I'm going to add some gems to the front to make it look pretty. Now I was thinking of um, doing the birthday candles on the inside as well. I forgot about that. Um, I might try that. I was going to do it with the pen. So on the outside, I'm um, going to do some gems. Just to bling it up a bit. So the rhinestones. Um, if I had a specific color, I might um, go with that. Actually, hmm. I'm thinking I might just fill in that little black gap down at the bottom with a few rhinestones just to make it look like it was meant to be. So you can always use embellishments like rhinestones, pearls, etc. Um, to add to your card or if you find that there's an oopsie moment like you, you know, got a bit of a smudge on it after you finish your card, they're also good things to add just to give it some interest. So now I've got those there that makes it look like that black space was meant. And you can't quite tell, but I did do Wink of Stella on there. And then you've got the inside newsflash, birthdays found to be good for health. Studies show that people who have had more birthdays live the longest. Now we'll try, hopefully I won't mess it up because normally I stamp before I things down. So this one here, 
because I've got different colors on the front, I want it to bring them in there. So I've got, I've picked out my pens, my stamp and write markers. You only want to color on your stamp if you're using uh, water-based inks because if you use any of the alcohol base, they will stain your stamps. So I decided, um, I picked out some colors that match some of the, some of the cardstock colors. And what you wanna do is you wanna start with your lightest color first. So this is um, Daffodil Delight, and I'm just gonna use the fat end of the pen, the brush tip, and brush it over the little um, stars, I mean, not stars, the little flames. So I'll brush that over and it doesn't matter if I went a little too far because that's why you starting with your lightest to darkest and then I think I will go with my cups of coral and do one one of the candles and then we'll go real red and do another candle Try only to go on that part of the stamp that you want. Then I believe um, I'll do the center with the crumb cake. And then I will do the Granny Apple Green for another candle. And the last candle, I believe this is Mossy Meadow. Okay, and then, because the colors might have dried, you need to huff on the stamp to make it, to activate the stamp. And so hopefully, I'll be able to stamp it in the corner. So I'm huffing, putting a bit of um, my hot breath on it to reactivate it. And cross fingers that it goes nicely. Should have done this before I glued the inside down, but sometimes I forget. Oh, that turned out pretty good. So there, we got different colored um, candles that sort of match the colors on the outside. So there's your scrap card, different than the other videos I've done with scrap cards. So that one, um, I use the Itty Bitty Birthdays for the sentiments, and this I just used different sentiments that I had at other stamp sets. I also used um, the words for the inside of there from the Approaching Perfection, and the Butterfly and the Hummingbird are from A Touch of Ink, which is a celebration stamp set. Hopefully you like that. If so, give me a thumbs up. and. I will have a description in the description. It will state all the products that I used um, in making these cards, as well as there'll be a list of the others that are participating in this month's global um, video hop. And I hope you go look at some of those um, sites as well. And if you'd like to see any more in the future, please subscribe as well as I do have some other videos I've done in the past regarding how to use your scraps. So you can look in my list of videos if you'd like to have a look at making any of those. Thanks so much for watching and have a lovely day. Oh, also um, check out my blog uh, if you want more details on these cards. I'll have close-up photos. If you live in New Zealand and don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, uh, you're welcome to go to my website, Michelle Critchley dot stampin up dot net if you'd like to purchase any of these products or even just to see my events calendar to come to some um, classes if you do have a demonstrator please contact them and they can help you to get any of these products thanks so much for watching bye bye